All right, Switch, what is going on tonight? My name is Sean Loftus, and I have, like you've probably heard so many times before, one of the greatest jobs in the world, getting to be a Switch pastor here at Life Church. And tonight, we're talking about a subject. We're talking about this idea, this concept. Are you ready for it? Are you excited? Okay, okay. We're talking about suffering. Everyone's like, oh, like, oh, oh, so suffering like some of you are like I brought a friend <laughs> suffering friend suffering night are you kidding me but here's the deal we're not talking about just any type of suffering we're talking about suffering <laughs> this doesn't get better we're talking about suffering that God for whatever reason he allows to take place in our life like, I don't care who you are. You could be a Christian. You could be a non-Christian. It, it doesn't matter what you believe. You have all hit some point in your life where something happens and you go, why God? Like, we do it over small stuff. I do it all the time. Some of y'all are like, why God? Like, why God? Was I not born and living in San Diego, California, on the beach, right? I, I know I do that, but hey, you know, I'm about to get, get a little personal, get a little um, deep with y'all. Some of us say, why God, based off of our physical appearance? If you laugh, I know to pray for you afterwards, I'll lay hands on you, but... Um, me and God have had it out about some stuff, okay, in my life. One of those things is the fact that I have the worst chicken legs you've ever seen. Okay, I need to pray for all of you. <laughs> Laugh at my pain. I'm serious. Like, if I wear shorts, it looks like God was like, he's fearfully and wonderfully made, and got to my knees, and he was like, oh, wait, I got something else to do. <laughs> like, why, well, God? On top of that, y'all, I don't know if you know this, I don't have any hair. I'm not even 30 yet. Like, I'm showing up to high school reunions, like, pff, bald. And you might be thinking, nothing wrong with going bald. But, like, before 30, it's like, God, that's a cold God right there. Like, we've had it out, right? Even in the small stuff, you start to get kind of upset at God, right? Like, you'll read a verse and be like, oh, it'll just, like, make you mad. You know, whenever you're sitting there, and at least for me, just be sitting in a service and that pastor, he drops that verse. He's like, he knows every single hair on your head. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Hey, no, I'm glad I took one for the team so you don't have to keep track of all those numbers. It's cool. But I found peace in it. I was praying with God one day. I was talking to him, just, hey. What's going on? What's going on with this? This? I can't even like really gain weight. Like I have to watch what I eat because I don't get thick. Like when guys eat and like get thick, they're like, oh, you're bulking up. For me, I just, I look like a potato with just two toothpicks stuck into it. <laughs> Go to the pool looking like Humpty Dumpty. Just... But God, he, he spoke to me in a still small voice. It was awesome. Praying like, God, chicken legs, oh, what's going on? And he just spoke to me and he said, Sean, a lot of people don't know this. Jesus was bald. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> One day, you can't find it in the Bible. It's like Legiticus 5.4. It says, Jesus, <laughs> Bible joke, so good. You love him, right? You love him. You got to love him. Here's the deal, though. When we start asking why God, it, it can turn from small, funny ideas to really some deep-rooted issues. It can go from small things to serious so fast. And for some of you, you ask, why God? I, I look at your generation. You have to go through things that in America, no other generation has ever had 
to go through. I read an article recently saying one of the things that causes so much fear and anxiety for you is the idea of school shootings, the frequency of them, waking up not knowing what could be happening at school that day. I read a study that said that girls in your generation from the age of 11 to 17, they have experienced some type of sexual abuse. Guys, one in five in that same age bracket, you look and go, why God? You can look and go, why racism? In 2019, why are we still suffering with this? For some of you, you've always been such a good student, but you're looking in, and at your other classmates and you're seeing them excel and you're going, why am I not excelling at that rate? Why do I have this learning disability? Why do I have this issue that I can't seem that God you're allowing in my life? And, and I'm just here to tell you tonight that it is okay to ask God why. People all through scripture are asking God why. Some of the main, best, most amazing examples in the Bible, they have their why God moments. I would argue that the most famous character in the Bible, the person that the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the, the, the whole idea, the whole story, it points to this one person. It points to Jesus. Even Jesus has his why God moments. I want you to look at just three verses tonight. We're going to look at Luke 22 verses 42 through 44. Jesus has uh, started his earthly ministry. It's about to come to an end. He actually breaks away from his disciples. He goes to talk to God the Father, and he gets in one of his favorite kind of prayer places. He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's having a conversation with God. He lets us see this. If you didn't know this about Jesus, Jesus is fully God, fully human, and he has one of the most intense human experiences in this moment, and I want us to just read it and, and just feel what he's going through. Jesus praying, he says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Now, when he says take this cup, it wasn't a physical cup. It was symbolic. And what was uh, the, the symbolism behind it in the biblical times, it was a representation of pain and suffering. He was saying, God, if there is any other way, why do we have to go with this cup switch. I'm here to tell you tonight that the longer you live life, the more cups you're going to get. And here's the deal, is that asking why is a totally fair question. But if you sit in the why, you will not get anywhere. I would even say it like this. Asking why will always leave you with a never-ending problem. But asking what will always leave you with a never-ending purpose. And will you, you could clap for that, that's okay. Because here's the deal. When we get these cups presented to us in life, we're so quick to say, God, can I have another one? Or hey, could you give it to someone else? Or hey, I'm just going to leave it here and hope that it goes away over time. But in reality, the only way to experience peace and purpose and all these things isn't to give the cup away. It's not to ask why I have it, but it's actually to go through with what is in it. Switch, can I tell you a cup that God has put in my life of suffering? I'll never forget the appointment. My wife was pregnant with our daughter. We go to this six-month ultrasound, and we leave that ultrasound with this reality that our daughter has a hole in her heart, fearfully and wonderfully made, yet she has this heart defect. And it's not an easy one. They tell us in that appointment, you're going to have to have open heart surgery as 
soon as she's born. And I remember praying and praying and praying. We believe in a God of miracles. He's going to heal her. I had people all over the country praying that we would experience a miracle, that God would change our cup. And the reality of it is she was born early. She was four pounds, three ounces. When she was born, they rushed her to the NICU. And she, for the next month and nine days, so she is in the NICU. And then she goes to another floor, the heart floor, and she's sitting there. And her health is declining. And they're trying to get her bigger because they don't want to do open heart surgery on a four pound, three ounce baby. And I'm sitting there asking God, why would you allow this kind of suffering? The day she gets wheeled off down the hallway and she goes into surgery, she's five pounds, six and a half hour long surgery, open heart. Still asking God why? Why this cup? Why us? And they wheeled her back. And it was touch and go for a little bit. And she started to she started to get a little bit of strength back. And this is what we walked back into. As a dad, you look at that and you still ask yourself, God, why? Why that kind of pain? Why that kind of suffering? But asking God why never brought me peace or purpose. It was from that day when I saw her and they closed her chest up that I started asking God what? God, I'm not going to get the answers I want this side of heaven, so I'm just going to start asking what. And when I started asking what, I started finding purpose. I started realizing God has entrusted me to steward this little girl and her story and her pain and her suffering, and I'm not going to blow it. Because I'm going to step into the what. And when you step into the what, you start to find purpose. And when you step into the what, you start to find peace. But here's the, the thing about peace switch that I need you to understand. I want you to feel this. Is that the peace of God, peace comes in pieces. Sometimes we're under this notion that you're less spiritual when you don't always feel the peace of God. But Jesus shows us in chronological order how the peace of God works. He's in the garden. He's in anguish. And he needs something. So an angel comes and comforts him. Imagine that kind of peace. Just shoulder rubs from an angel. Feeling good. Appreciate it. Heaven. Angel bounces. You know what the next sentence is? And again, he was in anguish. Peace comes in pieces. But if you want to experience the peace of God, you can't just keep staring and asking why. Although it's fair, you have to start asking what. And here's the thing that I've learned about the peace of God, is that even though it comes in pieces, God will never give his peace without having purpose behind it. And so when you're thinking, God, I want your peace, I want your peace, I want your peace, I want your peace, God is saying, I love you and I hear you, but here's the deal. Here's the example I've given in Jesus. I know you want the peace, but I'm not going to give you peace when you want it. I'm going to go ahead and give it to you when you need it. And you can look at this story and think that Jesus, yeah, is that good. And you can look at the story and think, Jesus, the peace didn't work. But when you look at the rest of the story, that angel, that comfort, it was just enough to get him through the next day. It was just enough to bring him to that cross. Switch, I don't know what cup God has put in front of you. I don't know what suffering that you're going through. But right now, I'm going to ask that I could pray for you and challenge you to not only ask God why, but to start asking him what he's doing. Would you pray with me? 
Jesus, we love you so much. We love that you, in your humanity, show us that it is not sinful to go through seasons where we feel anxious and fearful. But Jesus, you also show us that although it's okay to ask God why, we need to step back into the what. And that what is not my will, but your will be done. And so there are students in this room. I don't know what their cup is. Their cup could be a loss. Their cup could be something that a friend is going through. It could be a diagnosis. It could be cancer. It could be all these different things. It could be the pressure of feeling like they need to live up to their family. Whatever their cup is, whatever that suffering, whatever the outside source that you're allowing, I'm going to ask right now, Switch, that if you are ready to move from why God is doing this in your life into asking him what he wants to do through it, would you just raise your hand right now so I can pray over you? Hands everywhere, Jesus. Thank you for being our example. Thank you for showing us how to ask why but move forward in the what. I pray for every student that raised their hand that they would realize just how much strength they have. They would realize that you have given them this cup. It's not for anyone else. It's for them to go through. And as they go through it, they're gonna find purpose. And as they find purpose, they're gonna find peace. And although that peace comes in pieces, it always comes with a purpose. And it's gonna carry them in every situation, in every struggle, in everything they go through. I pray you give them strength, that you surround them with people, and that you would continue to encourage them to start always asking what after the why. And with heads bowed and eyes still closed, for some of you, this message is still a little bit confusing because your why is, is so different. Your why is why God? Why would you allow all these different things and, and you don't know him and so he seems distant and far but I'm here to tell you that Jesus when he asked why and didn't get his answer and said not my will but your will be done his what was to go to the cross at Calvary he was nailed to it with a couple thieves. He was mocked, he was scorned, he was beaten. He was tortured. He died on that cross. But three days later, God rose him from the grave. And so his what was to bring salvation to mankind, to humanity. His what was to show you not only is he willing to save you, but he has gone and felt the things that you have gone and felt through. And he is a real God and he is a living God. And for some of you tonight, you need to start stepping into that relationship and accept the fact that what Jesus did was permanent, it was real, he is resurrected, and he offers salvation freely for anyone who would accept it, because you couldn't earn your way to heaven, so heaven earned its way to you, and if that's you, and you want to raise your hand right now, and step into that relationship with Jesus, I'm going to ask right now, would you just shoot your hand up now? 